Combining rings and emblems together in an exciting new premise, Fire Emblem Engage was a game I was pretty excited for. Mixing the iconic characters from many Fire Emblem games together with a lovable new cast and a return to deep tactical gameplay, Engage easily stands out as a unique entry in the Fire Emblem series that still keeps the core things that make it great. Its unique parts are mostly found in its story and new mechanics, as at its core, it's a slick version of Fire Emblem's usual polished tactical gameplay, and if you'd like to see extra activities that were present in three houses, those are here to add some variety between battles, sometimes to what becomes an overwhelming extent if you're like me and feel the need to do everything. But at its core, it's still a great Fire Emblem game with well-balanced villains and heroes to make its story shine and complex fields that make each battle you play feel different, and a new and visually satisfying game that made me happy to enjoy the charm and deep story I love from the series in a new and engaging way. Emblem Engage follows new protagonist Alir, a divine dragon who mysteriously awakens one day after sleeping a thousand years with no memory of their past. They awaken in the world of Elios, a world featuring various kingdoms such as Firene and Illusia, and are quickly given the purpose of making sure the evil fell dragon remains sealed away to prevent another war breaking out like it did a thousand years ago. Part of this plan is bringing together the 12 emblem rings like the one the protagonist wears that houses classic Fire Emblem character Moth, and with strange monsters appearing called corrupted, things of course can't be as simple as just finding them, with these monsters spreading and castles being attacked, making for a story with plenty of conflict along the way. With a story spanning across the entire continent, the Divine Dragon must search far and wide for these rings, while looking into the signs of the Fell Dragon's return in another epic Fire Emblem story. Engage rightly gets straight into the action minutes after you jump into it, and After Three Hopes was a good reminder of how well it does its tactical gameplay. I quickly noticed it felt snappier than other entries too, which is thanks to its smart simplicity in how you make moves, as you can just drag characters onto the enemy you want to hit, scroll through weapons left to right, and then execute in seconds, and in a game like this, it takes the clunkiness out that makes doing this for many characters never feel like a hassle to play with. This extends to the new Emblem Ring system, the latest mechanic where you can summon and heroes from other Fire Emblem games using the rings you find in the story or bracelets from DLC, and these give you access to stronger abilities and weapons that are an important edge in battle, and that's aside from being a fun summoning system that appeals to the side of me that loved these kind of tropes in cartoons when I was growing up, but with a Fire Emblem twist. Some of these abilities are really powerful too, such as Celica's Warp Ragnarok that can teleport a character far away to strike someone by surprise, or Byla's Goddess Dance that can give an extra move to every character adjacent to the world. Era. And with enemies occasionally having similar abilities, it's a welcome new mechanic, and I hope we see it show up in some form in future Fire Emblems as well. Battling isn't the only thing you can do with rings, as you can also bond with the emblems within them, along with the myriad of other things you can do in the hub area called the Somniel, a place I came to both love and feel very overwhelmed by in my journey. While in each battle, you can level up and access things like the marketplace in the menus before battles begin, but if you want to be as strong as possible in this game where every turn counts, the Somniel offers plenty of activities to do this with, so many in fact that there became a point sometime past chapter 10 in my engaged journey that I actually began to avoid the area altogether because it was becoming such a time sink for my playthrough to a point where it was putting big gaps between story chapters which I didn't want. With Emblem Rings, you could summon extra Bond Rings based on other Fire Emblem characters to boost units who aren't holding a proper Emblem Ring yet. There's a cafeteria where you can make meals for your characters that can help you raise their supports, which you'll want to watch both to raise bonds and to enjoy fun events. Then there are things like doing push-ups to get extra buffs, a training area where you can raise class experience to help get advanced classes faster, and even an online component to help you earn things to augment your weapons. And that's not even getting to the other forms of weapon and unit enhancing as there are things I haven't mentioned. You don't have to do all of these things chapter by chapter, and in fact, Engage usually gives you a choice between going onto the world map or back to the Somniel after missions, that means you can keep getting through the main story most most of the time if that's how you want to play. However, because this is a tactical JRPG and battles can be longer, especially in the beginning of my playthrough, I felt the need to enter the Somniel and do every little thing in it before each battle in its first 10 chapters, but I noticed that time getting longer and longer, sometimes meaning I didn't even get into a mission on certain days I played, and because of that, I got burned out on these things that meant I stopped visiting it altogether, which did raise the game difficulty for me for a little, but meant I could spend more time getting immersed in a story, which 
which is how I preferred to play. I don't really regret this decision as the main story is worth experiencing at a good pace, but the budding parts are also something I enjoy about Fire Emblem, so now I have a bunch of them to get through post-game. With the gauge also having so many characters though, I don't totally mind as I feel like the main campaign was almost sort of a preview of the things I can do now that I've put good time into enjoying the story and I'm more than happy to mess around now that I've finished its main campaign. I should say that it possibly does some things to mitigate that overwhelming feeling though. Bond events are very short, support events are a little longer but feel shorter than other games, classes only have a couple of ranks to get to, and the extra boost activities there can only be done one to three times per each visit to the hub. Those last couple of things I appreciate as it made the main point I was going there more streamlined, even if I did end up skipping those things ultimately in the later part of my playthrough. I did also kind of miss how deep some of the support events go in other Fire Emblems too, with Engage often trading that for more lighthearted ones that only a minute or so long. But it also gave way for me to get to know a vast variety of characters instead, even if it did also show me why most JRPGs have smaller parties than this, as it really does give you an opportunity for more intimacy. That's not to say I didn't enjoy this portion of Engage, but I'd recommend maybe leaving it Somnio Rabbit Hole until the end of a playthrough if you want to spend the most time enjoying the complex maps and story that this new Fire Emblem brings. Ultimately, there's plenty of content to keep busy with, both in and out of the main story, that helps bring my own playthrough up to 62 hours, and I know I could probably get that up to the 100 mark if I spend more time with the many characters I met in this great new story, and I hope to do so someday. I was glad when I decided to spend more time in Engage's story, as the great writing we've seen in other Fire Emblem games is more than present here, complete with a much appreciated update to visuals that help make its story a standout part of its world. We all know that the Switch is a little weaker than other consoles, whether you're playing it in handheld or docked, so instead of doing the important cutscenes in Engine, Engage opts for the use of gorgeous pre-rendered cutscenes, a fair few more than we saw in Three Hopes, and it makes its important parts absolutely stunning to watch that make this feel like the most beautiful beautiful Fire Emblem I've played. The end engine character models look super high quality too, with the only difference being that it gets a little repetitive seeing each character's expressions as a lot of them use the same animations, and since they're a little unique, it's easy to tell when a pre-rendered scene has been exited, which was sometimes a little distracting. But it's quickly made up for with how expressive the pre-rendered ones are that go together with an interesting plot that makes me able to forgive it, especially considering the sheer amount of dialogue there is in Engage if you factor in main story inside events, so with that in mind, I'm willing to put up with a few repetitive animations here and there on nice character models in exchange for more story. As for the story itself, once I left the Somniel and dove into it, I was really impressed how connected it was able to make me feel to the world and with the many characters in it. While it does focus on the core cast of princes and princesses from its kingdoms and leaves some of the cast feeling more like cameos, the characters it does focus on have great moments to make you want to fight for them, with protagonist Alir being a kind leader that felt worth following especially with all the things you learn about them as the story goes on. I was also impressed by how much I liked the villains in it that made everything feel well-rounded, with the reveals of different sides of each one being well worth seeing if you liked them in early chapters. And with the cherry on top of it being that the characters from other Fire Emblem games managed to feel like natural parts of the story, it was also a good way to get me interested in Fire Emblem games I haven't played yet that have me hoping to take the time to look into them soon. All in all, its graphics and story made each chapter in its world feel exciting and meaningful, which paired well with how big and varied it is, that made Engage feel like a new high-quality entry in the Fire Emblem series that I hope means we can expect the same kind of feeling in future entries. I mentioned how the Somniel overwhelms me with how much there was to do in it, but on the flip side, it's exciting for post-game as there's plenty for me to do any time I jump back in. During my short time in post-game before making this, I began my way through the many support events I unlocked throughout my journey that felt well-earned after a big and epic story. If I was to keep playing, which may not be immediately possible as I've received another game for review, I would check out more of these along with a few paralogues I have left that can break various level caps to help get my characters be as strong as possible. This could be useful as I also plan to keep up with its DLC since I purchased the expansion pass, and its maps, especially the Tiki one, have been some of the most interesting ones I've played with, so its story content also promised there's definitely plenty of reason to come back, and I can't see myself running out of things to do in it by the time the next wave of DLC comes. In saying that, it is probably 50-50 if I get to it before that, as while well, I do want to get to know more of the characters I liked in it, such as Saline, Rosado, and Yunaka, just to name a few, I do also look at the sheer amount 
want to do and feel that overwhelmed feeling again, but maybe I'll get over that in due time and look to it when I want to play something big. In any case, it's an experience I enjoyed enough to at least hope I get back to it soon, which is all I can really ask for from this new Fire Emblem game. Fire Emblem Engage is a big new Fire Emblem experience. It brings in the tactical gameplay that the series fans know and love, and expands the lighthearted, more social side of it a lot, and as long as you don't feel pressured to do everything in it like I did, these things can be a fun companion to a great story that is worth experiencing. The new ring mechanic was a welcome addition to its tactical gameplay with the way it added cool new moves to spice up battle, and while I don't know if we'll see it in other Fire Emblems in future, it certainly was a unique and memorable mechanic that makes Engage stand out in the series and has me looking forward to the extra emblems and maps its DLC will bring as it further expands this big new world. So despite having moments I felt overwhelmed in it, I'd still recommend Fire Emblem Engage to fans of the series looking for a beautiful new tactical Fire Emblem story, and the new parts of its world and mechanics made for a pretty new game that I enjoyed the many hours I spent in it. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below if you've tried Fire Emblem Engage and if you have, what did you think of it? You like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you, bye!